Hi everyone, Nada here and in this video I'm going to talk about another RTX 4090 graphics card that I tested in the last few days and right here I have the Gaming OC from Gigabyte. Now unlike ASUS and MSI that send their flagship models, uh, Gigabyte decided to actually send this slightly more affordable version as much as an RTX 4090 can be affordable, but still uh, this gaming OC should offer more performance than anyone really needs and it should easily compete with the highest of options on the market. But can it offer enough value to compete with Nvidia's own Founders Edition? Let's check it out! This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high quality power supplies are extremely efficient. They are very quiet due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They offer a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind. And you even get the new 12 volt high power connection that you need for these brand new RTX 4090 graphics cards from Nvidia. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there. And as a nice bonus, you get a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Even though this gaming OC from Gigabyte is supposed to be one of the cheaper 4090 graphics cards, it is still an absolutely massive card. It is 34 centimeters long, it is 15 centimeters deep and about seven and a half centimeters thick. So again, you will need to make sure to check the specs of your case or you will need to grab a measuring tape to make sure that it will fit. So it is bigger than the Founders Edition, but it is also 200 grams lighter, standing at just over 2 kilos. And now keep in mind that it's still a lot for a graphics card, and as you can see, it is built really well, it is pretty sturdy overall with a proper metal backplate, and to keep it nice and straight and take some pressure off your PCIe slot, they included this GPU holder as well and the holder is a bit different than what we usually see. So you have one support bracket that you secure on the motherboard itself, and then another that you add to the graphics card and you put them together. And I think this system works uh, really well in keeping your card tightly in place. Uh, Design-wise, it is a pretty good looking card. The gray color scheme easily matches up with a lot of motherboards and a lot of cases from various brands. And they also added this uh, interesting RGB effect around the fans. Now, it reminds me a bit of the RGB effect that their Aorus RTX 2080 Extreme had, but the implementation is actually a bit different. So the LEDs are not on the actual fan tips anymore that uh, made the Extreme card extremely noisy, but instead they're on the base of the fans with reflectors around the edges that give it this RGB ring look. Now the downside of this is that when they're not spinning you don't get RGB either and this card has that fan stop feature that stops the fans when GPU is idle. So if you really want to show it off non-stop you will have to adjust the fans and let them run at low RPM all of the time. Now the power comes from the same 16 pin 12 volt high power connector that Nvidia uses and again the adapter is included and you need to plug in four 8 pin PCIe connectors to it. But as I said before, it is really short and kind of hard to cable manage, so I really do suggest you get one from your power supply brand. So Seasonic that I'm using for testing, but also a lot of other brands, will actually send you one of these longer cables for free if you recently bought a capable power supply from them. And on the back side, you get one HDMI 2.1 connection and three DisplayPort connections, which is the same as on the Founders Edition. You also get a dual BIOS feature where you can choose between the OC and the quiet BIOS. Now the 4090 is a very impressive chip that made a huge performance jump in one single generation and compared to the RTX 3090 it is on average about 60% faster on 4K resolution without any upscaling technology present. And on 1440p it is 41% faster than the 3090 so again it is not a bad option for those uh, super fast 240Hz Quad HD monitors. And even though 1080p resolution is usually very CPU bound, the 4090 showed a significant improvement here as well. Now, I'm not really suggesting that you should buy this card for 1080p gaming, but for professional esports gamers where uh, every little bit of advantage matters, this will also be the chip to go for. 
Now, compared to other cards, the Gaming OC in the OC BIOS actually showed the highest average clock speed of all four cards I've tested so far, although the difference is very, very small. In the Quiet BIOS, however, the clocks and the performance are basically uh, the same as on the Founders Edition, but the memory speeds are all the same. That increase in clock speed does give a very slight performance increase, but that also depends on the game that you're playing. So it varies from about 1% in Dirt 5 to about 3% in World War Z, but keep in mind, those are barely noticeable differences. But looking at the noise levels in the default OC BIOS, the Gigabyte is a bit louder than the Founders Edition and other cards as well, and it is a little bit quieter in the Silent BIOS. Now, 41.6 decibels at 50 centimeters distance isn't completely inaudible, but it is reasonable for such a high power GPU at full load. And I don't think the 44 decibels in the OC BIOS is a big problem either, but if you're like me and you prefer a quiet PC build, I would just stick to the quiet profile unless you're always gaming with your headset on. Now, the slightly higher fan speed of the OC mode uh, does lead to good thermal results, so running slightly cooler than the ROG Strix card, but the 64 degrees in the quiet BIOS is also an excellent result. It is the same situation with the GPU's hotspot, and the memory temperatures look even better. So, in terms of efficiency, the Gaming OC actually looks pretty good. You can either go a bit louder than the Founders Edition with improved thermals, or you can decide to go slightly quieter with still a pretty reasonable performance improvement. In terms of power consumption, the Gaming OC performs in line with the other cards I've tested, uh, usually pulling about 430 to 445 watts, which is just under the TDP spec of a 4090. But it is a bit surprising, and I checked this actually several times, that the power consumption averaged a bit lower in the OC BIOS than in the quiet BIOS. And even though uh, these results always fluctuate a bit, it is good to see that it is not drawing a lot of excess power compared to other cards. My test bench with an i9-12900K processor and this graphics card was pulling around 620 watts from the wall, which is not little, but it's also not more than with an overclocked RTX 3090 Supreme from MSI, which means that if you already have a good quality 850 watt power supply, it should be completely fine. But if you're buying a power supply for this card, I would go for a 1000 watt one or even more because then it will run closer to its peak efficiency, it would be even quieter, and you will also have some headroom for overclocking or maybe for the upcoming CPUs that are rumored to be even more power hungry than the previous generations. To sum it all up, I think Gigabyte's tactic of showing off their gaming OC card instead of the a more expensive Oros Master kinda makes total sense in my opinion. I think that the default OC BIOS is a little bit louder than it should be, uh, but the quiet BIOS is well-tuned, it is showing a reasonable noise level and really good thermals. And with similar clock speeds and the uh, in-game performance being very close, this gaming OC will really leave you wondering if you should really spend a lot more on other top-of-the-line RTX 4090 cards. But do keep in mind that this is all in theory and based on previous generations of GPUs because right now I don't have any information about pricing on any of these third-party cards. So we will still have to wait a bit longer and see how all this will unravel because if Gigabyte is able to offer this card at only a bit over MSRP, I think it's very reasonable and a very good alternative to the FE, especially since they're still offering an extra year of warranty if you register your card after you buy it. So you get four years of warranty total. But if it ends up being way more than the already high MSRP, with the Founders Edition also performing really well on all counts, the story will be a bit different. So it's totally up to Gigabyte to decide on which side they want to be and just adjust the price accordingly. Anyway, that is all I have today for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this, because I will be covering these 4090 cards a bit more, but also the upcoming CPU and GPU launches. So stay tuned and see you in the next one. Bye.